1.7 absolute value equations and inequalities. Note the little bit of humor here. And absolute value is what we're going to be talking about today. So if you don't understand this joke yet, you will in a second. When we talk about the absolute value of x, I want you to always be thinking the distance, okay? Always be thinking distance a number is from zero on the number line. So you know that distance is never negative. Absolute values can never be negative. The absolute value of negative two, for example, is just saying how far is negative two from zero on the number line. Since it is two units away, the absolute value of negative 2 is 2 because we're two units away from 0 on the number line. Okay, so what does that mean? The formal definition is actually a piecewise function, which we haven't talked about yet, but it means that the absolute value of x is defined differently whether x is a positive number or x is a negative number. Okay, so you said that we're going to define it one way if it's positive, let's say greater than or equal to zero, and another way if it's less than zero. How are we going to figure this out? Let's do some examples. Let's talk it through. If we had the absolute value of negative two, what did we just say that was? Two. So that means if x was negative two, how do we get to two? We had to take the opposite of the number negative We have negative to take the two. opposite of negative two. In other words, the absolute value of x was negative what x was, right? The opposite of what x was. Okay, so it was the opposite if we took a negative number. What if we were looking at, let's do a different number here, the absolute value of three. Well, how far is one, two, three from zero on the number line? It's exactly the same as its value, three. It is three units away. So that would just be the absolute value of x is just itself, not the opposite of itself as it was here. Okay, so that's the formal definition. And don't be confused because negative x does not denote a negative number. Right. x is negative when the answer is negative x. So negative x ends up being negative, negative x. Don't mix that up, mm -hmm. good. All right, and so this is just, again, the distance from zero, it is on the number line. And in this uh, other example, it's the distance that x is from another number like b, if you write x minus some other number, and that distance can be k. We'll talk a lot more about that at the end, so that'll make a lot more sense. All right, so let's go ahead and solve. So what do we know? If the absolute value of x minus 5 is 7, that means that x minus 5 could be either 7 or x minus 5 is equal to negative 7 because both 7 and negative 7 are seven units away from zero on the number line. So then you just solve them each separately, add five, and so you get x equals 12, or add five, add five, and you get x equals negative two. Now we want to always check our answers. This is particularly important in absolute value problems, which we'll talk about soon also. 12 minus 5 is 7, that works. And negative 2 minus 5 is negative 7. The absolute value of negative 7 is 7. So both of these work. Those are our answers. Okay. How should we do this one? The same way we did the other one. 4x plus 12 equals 28, or 4x plus 12 equals negative 28. Negative 28. Let's do this side first. 
So I get 4x equals 16, divide by 4, and I get x equals 4, or, let's do this side, minus 12, I get 4x equals negative 40, divide by 4, divide by 4, x equals negative 10. Let's make sure. 4 times 4 is 16. 16 plus 12 is 28. That works. Or negative 40 plus 12 is negative 28. The absolute value negative 28 is 28. So they both work. All right, let's move right along. Extraneous solutions sometimes occur when you're doing absolute value problems. Even though you've done everything right and you've solved the problem correctly, you may get a solution that when you plug it back into the original equation, doesn't work. That's what an extraneous solution is. So a solution that doesn't work when you plug it back in to the original equation. We're about to do an example of this, but just remember the word extraneous solutions. Okay, so in this one it says solve 4x plus 10, the absolute value of 4x plus 10 equals 6x. So what does that mean? It means that the 4x plus 10 is 6x units away on the number line. So it equals 6x or it equals negative 6x, because again, the 4x plus 10 is what is 6x units away from 0 on the number line. All right, so now, let's just solve the left side first. Get the 6x over on the left. Negative 2x equals negative 10, divide by negative 2, divide by negative 2, x equals 5, or, all right, on this side, I'm actually going to just put the 4x over on this side, doesn't matter, and so we get 10 equals negative 10x, divide by negative 10, and I get x equals negative 1. So let's go ahead and put these in and see if they both work. So 5 times 4 is 20. 20 plus 10 is 30. So here, let's just write it down. We have the absolute value of 30. Does that really equal 5 times 6, 30? Yes, it does. Yeah, so that worked. Okay, that works. And let's try negative 1. One, put it in. So we have negative 4 plus 10. Negative 4 plus 10 is? 6. 6. So is the absolute value of 6 equal to 6 times negative 1, negative 6? Is the absolute value of 6 equal negative 6? Absolutely not. No. So this side doesn't work. This is an extraneous solution. So that's what I was talking about. So we are not going to circle it. It does not work. So our answer is just x equals 5. This doesn't mean we did anything wrong. It was just an extraneous solution. All right. Absolute value inequalities. So this is saying that ax plus b is less than c units away from 0 on the number line. So that means it's somewhere between negative c and c is where my number lies, right? So what do I mean? All right, so it means that my ax plus b is somewhere between negative c and c on the number line. It's somewhere in between there, not including it because it's less than. It has to be less than c units away. So somewhere between negative c and c. My ax plus b is somewhere between there. 
All right, and so now if I have less than or equal to, then that just means that these are closed circles. Okay, so that should make sense if you understood the one before. That's a negative, see? All right, now this says that I'm more than C units away. My number is more than C units away. More than C. On either side. I'm more than C units away. So now this is a case of or. It means that I'm either bigger or I'm smaller. Obviously it can't be an intersection type of thing because they don't cross each other. So I need it connected with an or. The AX plus B is greater than C or my AX plus B is less than the negative C. All right, and then this one's going to follow. Instead of open circles, I have closed circles. Nothing major there, if you understood. The third one, you understand the fourth one. AX plus B is greater than or equal to C, or AX plus B is less than or equal to negative C. Okay, so now let's try and solve one of these. 3x minus 7 is greater than or equal to 5. So again, it means I'm more than 5 units away. I'm more than 5 units away. More than that. Is that an and or an or type of thing? It's an or. Okay, that makes sense, right? I have a little trick too. I don't like tricks, but this one is good. So greater This kind of sounds like or, greater. So you'll always remember that greater is or. I like okay, it. Okay, so three, but think about the picture. Think about it, don't memorize things, but I'll just tell you that. All right, three x minus seven is greater than or equal to five, or three x minus seven is less than or equal to negative five. It's more than five units away. All right, let's do that. Plus seven, plus seven. 3x is greater than or equal to 12. Divide by 3, divide by 3. When was the time that I flipped the sign again? When you divide by a negative number. When you multiply or divide by a negative number. Okay, so I don't have to worry about that. x is greater than or equal to 4. Or, let's add 7. What do I have? 3x is less than or equal to 2. Divide by 3, divide by 3. X is less than or equal to 2 thirds. Word problem time. Okay. A food manufacturer specifies that every cereal box should have a net weight of 25 ounces with a tolerance of 1.2 ounces. Okay, so tolerance of 1.2 ounces means that it can be 1.2 ounces more or 1.2 ounces less. It's kind of like, you know, when you see plus or minus 1.2. Okay. Okay, so write and solve an absolute value inequality that is, describes the acceptable net weights for the box. Okay, before you get started, we're trying to think right now that the box, it, its weight should be 25 plus or minus 1.2, right? right? That's acceptable weights. All right, go ahead. Okay, so as we saw at the very beginning, we don't always find the difference between the number and zero. We can also find the difference between the number and here, 25. So we wanna find, letting x be the weight of the cereal, what the difference is between the weight of the cereal and 25 ounces. Okay, so the difference between the weight of the cereal and 25 ounces would be x minus 25. Right, and we don't want it to be more than 1.2 difference. Right, because 1.2 was the maximum right. difference we could have, okay? So when something can't be more than, you say it has to be less than or equal to 1.2. 
And of course, we put the absolute value signs around it because the difference between x and 25 can't be more than 1.2. So I think about it just slightly differently. It's saying the same thing. I just want to explain it again because this is a tough concept. So, for example, if I knew that my uh, cereal had to weigh exactly 25 ounces, then I could say that the difference between how much my cereal weighs and 25 has got to be zero. But that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that it can vary by up to 1.2 ounces. So it can vary from the, let me say, ideal weight of 25 ounces by up to 1.2 ounces. But that's the most it can ever vary by. And since I'm saying it can vary by that much, it can be plus or minus, that's why I have the absolute value. Okay, so we're saying the same thing. We came up with the same exact equation. Just think about how it suits you best. Now let's go ahead and solve it. Less than or equal to, so... That means it has to be between mm -hmm. the negative 1.2 and the positive 1.2. Because it's less than that amount, so it means it's got to be somewhere in between. All right, so now let's just solve it. I can solve it all in one line here. When I add 25, I've just got to add 25 to absolutely everything here. And I have? You have... Let's see, 23.8 is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 26.2. Okay, so I know that uh, the acceptable weights are between 23.8 ounces, oops, ounces, and 26.2 ounces. And those are my acceptable weights. Okay, last problem. Okay. You have found that your new winter coat is comfortable to wear when the outdoor temperature is below 10 degrees Fahrenheit and 42 degrees Fahrenheit inclusive. Write an absolute value inequality for this temperature range when T represents the temperature. In this problem, in order to find the temperature, we have to find the temperature that is in the middle of the possible range of temperatures first. Now, we don't want the temperature to go below 10 or above 42. So it has to be between the 10 and the 42, okay. All right, so in order to find the midpoint there, we take an average. Okay, so we want to find the midpoint, kind of what's in between the 10 degrees and the 42 degrees. Okay, so that would just be the average. So 10 plus 42 over 2 would be the average. And that's 26. 26 degrees Fahrenheit is in the middle. Okay, is that's my middle, middle temperature. So let me just, can I quickly just draw yes, a little number absolutely. line? So if we have 10 degrees Fahrenheit and we have 42 degrees Fahrenheit, we're saying right here, this 26 degrees Fahrenheit is going to be in the middle. So the right temperature mm. would be the difference between what we're trying to find and 26. So kind of instead of the distance from zero, we're saying now what's the the distance from 26. Good. Well, it would work if I went 16 units this way or 16 units this way. Right. Okay, so it has to be within 16 units. So if T is equal to temperature. Okay, I'm saying within 16 units. Right. That's going to be acceptable. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if T is my temperature, then what do I know? That... Well, again, instead of zero, we're not saying the distance from zero on the number line. We're saying the distance from 26 on the number line. So that is what we're going from. The distance from 26 on the number line, it's got to be within 16 units. Now, is this a lesson or is it a lesson or equal to? Well, it says inclusive. There we go. So that's a lesson or equal to. So that's how I would set it up. And it's just asking me to write an absolute value inequality for this question. We're done. That's it. Okay. And that's it for this lesson. Bye.